Here's the reactivity series for the most common metals we consider. You can see that hydrogen and carbon have also snuck in there. That's because it's often necessary to compare the reactivity of metals to those in order to predict what will happen in a reaction. A more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from a compound, that is, kick it out. For example, if you place zinc in copper sulfate solution, you'll see copper forming on the lump of zinc. The zinc displaces the copper to form zinc sulfate, kicking the copper out of the compound. We know that alkali metals react with water. The reaction happens because, for example, potassium is more reactive than hydrogen. So in essence, it displaces it from the water, leaving potassium hydroxide, and hydrogen gas is produced. We can use this when it comes to extracting metals from their ores found in the ground. Any metal less reactive than carbon can be displaced by it. For example, iron can be displaced from iron oxide with carbon. This is called smelting. We can also say that the iron oxide has been reduced. It's the opposite of oxidation, because oxygen is lost.